good to have you back with us, DeSoto Brown and Martin Despang, in our continued search for a built environment being in compliance with the natural environment, and particularly here in our urban, coastal, mid-century, modern jungle paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> All of that and more, right? All of that and more. That's exactly right. So while our producer, Eric, walks us through some jungle, you uh -huh. know, I want to share um, a story from some years ago on the big island, actually, pretty soon after I came here. I had the chance to drive, be driving along with some colleagues in a bus with a great madam of uh, landscape architecture, Cornelia Oberlanda. She was pointing out to me the difference between invasive and exotic. And invasive, yep. we know, yep. something from somewhere else that takes over and pushes the local stuff away. Yes. Right? Exotic is also not from the place, not endemic, but it basically complements the place. So mm -hmm. she was pointing out to the west side of the island where everything is lava rock and nothing grows, and there was some grass that only that grass grows there and That's it's right. not a native grass. So ever since I applied I this to well. any kind of flora and fauna and these other creatures called human beings mm -hmm. and what they create as environments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So, and plants are part of that. We're talking absolutely. about buildings, mm -hmm. but plants are a mm -hmm. part of it, particularly mm -hmm. for the building group that we're going to be talking about exactly. the, today in today's show. So is there maybe this sort of jungle that we can dwell in in these days? I think there is, and let's go to the... Uh, slide the, five for the, that. The slide that's going to tell us about that. So that one looks magically mysterious, right? And we see something in the back that we've seen before. That's What's right. that? That is the originally the Kahala Hilton Hotel mm -hmm. uh, built in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And so we're somewhere close to that, but it looks like we're in a jungle, but that's there's right. some light on, so that's kind of really mysterious. Yeah. And you can see here, these are labeled and copyright labeled down there, and these are all taken by a gentleman w with the name of Andrea Britzi, and, and Andrea is a fellow European, he's from mm -hmm. Italy, mm -hmm. but has lived here for a while, and these Europeans are probably particularly obsessed with they living in be. the jungle because they there is be. no such thing. I mean, he could have done it a little bit more in Italy, but it still mm. gets cold in Italy, yeah. right? Even no. if you go down to jungle. even if you go down to Sicilia or no, something no, at no, the no, very no, southern, no, no, right? No. So next slide here is uh, is Andrea in his jungle place, and um, that he truly in, indulges in and and enjoys, right? Absolutely. And, he, and we've gotten to visit it. Exactly. Yeah. And so um, let's go to the next slide. And we want to basically already say that um, this building was uh, built soon, a few years after the Kahala Hotel yep. in 1967. Mm -hmm. And it's on Kamehameha School land. Yes. And they negotiated a lease for 60 years. So if you do the math, in 2027, in eight years, that lease expires. Right. And everyone is very, very afraid that that's going to be the end of this project here. And we want to move on now within the next couple of slides here. And basically, one after the other organization, individuals, entities, right. people say, why not? Advocating for, the, for, right? this, for this group of buildings to be saved. And let's also point out that in this slide that we're looking at right now, there's Andrea in the upper left corner. Next to him is Julius Schulman, mm -hmm. who is a very famous mid-century architecture photographer, documented very important buildings, and Andrea is a fan of his. Absolutely. And the picture on the bottom, which shows the Kahala Beach Apartments, is by Julius Schulman. Absolutely, and that made, as you can tell, the postcard of the National Locomomo Symposium that we just had. That's right. It was actually an international symposium. Mm -hmm. So once again, Julius Schulman's books are owned all over the world. So there are people who come here particularly to see that. Yeah. So I think as an as a, as a owner with yes. a more than private obligation, but a public obligation, which Kamehameha School certainly has, is obligated to basically yeah. serve this demand of culturally yeah. interested people from all over the world. Correct. And I have to say, while, you know, Andrea here, because that's um, basically a, a picture from his website, but uh, just so we know that he says, well, due to the nature, literally and figuratively right. speaking, of his place, 
When he comes home, he does something that you just concluded one of the recent shows with and say, let's go. What do we do? We go swimming? We go what? No, no, no. we strip down. We, we strip go, down or we're talking about we go nudism? Naked. Exactly. Oh, we haven't yeah. gotten to that show well, yet. Well, we're we gonna will. talk we will. we will. But, but we you were will. you were announcing that and, and closing right. a show recently that's and correct. saying let's I stay was. naked, right? That's right. So that's what he does. I do the same. I'm basically just throws everything off and basically because you can't do that because this uh, jungle provides the privacy mm -hmm. that you might want, that you might need. And the place is so easy breezy that it's comfortable. That he just like his idol uh, Julius Schulman. And the thing on the left is basically his business card, which is the building and he itself. Is, he is a, a very sought after high end photographer that shoots all over the mm -hmm. world and all of the United States. The yep. TWA terminal that you always yes. wanted to visit and almost yes. did. It was under construction. He was recently there. So that's I'll a, get there. That 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 Andrea chooses this his home as the visual address for his business card speaks again for this project, right? Appropriately so. So let's move on. Who else would endorse this? At the top left, we see a place that we have heard about. We have. And the gentleman to the left, does he look familiar? I don't know. There's, a, there's this guy. Well, not we, the, there, there's, you just see the back of his head. To the very left. I wonder if that. Well, there you go. Does we that look only see him from the southern side. That's so, right, because that's me. So why would this guy and his institution be interested of keeping that? Well, there are a number of reasons, and we're going to be talking about those. But the thing that we're talking about in this particular photograph is there are two large uh, painted murals that are original pieces of art. And the woman on the right is an uh, inhabitant mm -hmm. of these apartments. Mm -hmm. She has this 1967 issue of American Artists mm -hmm. magazine, mm -hmm. which has an article about these two paintings, yeah. which were commissioned for this site. And they're both in extremely good condition, which mm -hmm. is amazing, because mm -hmm. they're open to the mm -hmm. open air. Mm -hmm. They were painted in latex, and they're still there. And she was coming uh, when we were there, thanks to Andrea yeah. visiting that, with a bunch of other people that we're going to introduce to you mm -hmm. soon. And she was coming with this magazine, actually not knowing who we were and what we wanted, but mm -hmm. approaching Andrea as a fellow resident and basically saying, look, I found this magazine right. and how amazing That's is right. this? That's right. So again, there's, there's also many residents who, there's some who couldn't care less and they have mm -hmm. homes all over the world and they're hardly ever there, but there are these hardcore people who mm -hmm. basically really live the place and being there and, and, and want want this to you and know, let's keep, point out who else place. is in that photograph there is a gentleman on the left side who is not me who is the one well, next to you yeah. and we can jump to the next slide to do that because okay. here is actually on the right side yeah. right of you because the picture was taken from the other and has copyrighted andrea did this one here and this gentleman is a late partner of the firm who was uh, basically designing the hotel. This right. is Ronald Lindgren. Yeah. And he's a late partner in what was called at that time Killingsworth, Brady, Lindgren, and Stricker at that time. And this was a chance. He was kept so busy. And we will have a couple of shows with him. Yeah. And he was actually working next door. He wasn't part of the original design team of the Kahala, but he then basically remodeled it to be the Mandarin. Yes. yes. And so he uh, never really had the chance to see next door because he was so right. busy. So that was his chance here. And again, this is a book on the top right that, again, uh, we own that in the office back in Germany. And, and many architectural and culturally interested people all over the world. This is the case study how it's serious from, from mid-century by Intenza. Yeah. Uh, this is America at its best. And many people, again, have that, and, and that's the travel guide. And they, mm -hmm. they travel the world, and they want to see these. For these important, and they want to see that. So he just can't tear this down, because no. then these people will be pissed. Exactly. Right? Well, we shouldn't so, lose it. We should not lose it. Absolutely. So let's move on to uh, next, another gentleman here that you have known for some while, Ryan. Yeah, but I also want to say, too, we're in Andrea's apartment here. We are. And we are enjoying the not only the easy breeziness, but we get to see the interior of the whole and and, and talking, complex. you probably think about the bicycle there. So obviously he's a bicyclist. That's and right. This is a Bianchi, so it's from his culture. <laughs> yeah, right? right, right. But it's also very interesting because Ronald told us that he basically, when he was doing the construction supervision, they basically generously offered him a, a hotel room in the what mm. is now going to be the Halepuna, which was the Waikiki Park Hotel, right. which is the one 
Malka of the Halakolani, which he designed, we will yes. do a show about, right. and he chose to stay there and then bicycle all the way <laughs> past your home uh -huh. and up that pretty steep yeah. diamond head foothills yeah. to go all the way to Kahala. So these are pretty fit people, right? Yes. And, and who choose that lifestyle of not being the lazy uh, air-conditioned uh, dwellers, going yeah. to the air-conditioned cars, all air-conditioning, yeah, yeah, yeah. they really intentionally because none of them are actually from here they're all howlies right yeah. and this gets us to the gentleman in the middle who at the beginning of one show that i called uh, howlies hawaii he mm -hmm. said well i want to make sure a disclosure that you said that and not me <laughs> and who is that gentleman <laughs> Well, he's the acting. He's the acting dean. Well, he, the, he's the acting dean of the he, architecture school. He correct? is, but that comes next. I first oh, want to me. say before pardon he me. became that, he okay, was working with you guys. Oh, oh, oh historic Hawaii. That's right. And, and that's Bill Chapman here, yeah. who has been involved with historic Hawaii forever. Right. As as others, and again, um, the two shows we did with him. One was about the uh, Candless uh, restaurant, yeah. which isn't anymore around, and the other one uh, is, is the Varsity building, which we're sure. very afraid won't be around sometime soon. We're going to actually do a Doko Momo walking mm -hmm. tour with Doko Momo on the 26th of this month at mm -hmm. 2 p.m. Please all come and let's yeah. save this building as well, right? Correct. Correct. Same landowner, same landlord, same land which is Kamehameha uh, Schools. Absolutely right. right, yeah. So next slide here. Who else? Uh, so as you already said, yes, Bill is the current acting dean of my Correct. School of Architecture. So he's my boss, as you correctly yes, said. Yes. And we're doing this job for inspiring the emerging generation. Right. And so what is this uh, picture here reminding us of? Well, we've got Bruno Mars up at the top. And we've got, do we have Dwayne Johnson in there too? Hey, we have I him think too, we do. yeah. Um, because we're hoping that uh, those guys who came from here mm -hmm. uh, and are now rich and powerful. We hope mm -hmm. that they will want mm -hmm. to participate in some of these uh, and, preservation activities. And we have, too. and not only that, also to do the evolution of this tradition. So mm -hmm. we have this uh, cargo courtyard cabana project in the in the making right. with them, right? We're going to talk and about so that. the students actually enjoyed this here as a very good precedent for their project and move on to the next slide. And what did they find out, which is really surprising? Well, this amazes me. They found out that the lanai of this mm -hmm. unit mm -hmm. in the Kahala Apartments is the same dimensions as a shipping container. Mm -hmm. And we talk about shipping containers being used for housing. Mm -hmm. So this is a high-end housing yeah. development yeah. that actually is using part of those same dimensions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And high end, we can already go to the next slide and talking about it's it's actually only high end because of its location, right? right? right. And the clientele. But as we were pointing out in a in an appetizer show about this, uh, which we did a while ago, we were saying uh, this was built very efficiently yeah. and effectively. And yeah. Ronald has basically confirmed that. And I said while they were not making money on the hotel, on this one they were because they're so sort of repetitive. Yeah. And they're so right. lean and mean right, designed. Right, right. So you could actually say they have social housing uh, sort of um, soul yeah. and, and, and just happen to be because of the location and the inhabitation, they right. are more upscale. But exactly. from their concept, they're actually not. They're almost right. social housing right. from their, right. from their right. thinking right. and making. Right. And that's why we get to Mr. Social Housing Expert, uh, Tropicure Rockwood, and then uh, Bandit Kanistakon, both uh, educators and practitioners, yeah. and you had interviewed Abundant mm -hmm. about having done the contemporarily, yeah. currently best building in right. that tradition in the Moli'ili neighborhood. That's right? right, that's right. So all these people basically said, no, this is, this is the, the best. We need this as an inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, we need this to stay around, right? Correct. Correct. And next slide uh, shows us um, that it's not in its absolute original condition. Some of the units still have the lanai being opened, but at some point this aluminum window manufacturer came in and, and sold yeah. it to many people. But Andrea was telling us when he had his daughter visiting that she sleeps on the lanai, has these all opened, mm -hmm. because sort of generously there are three tracks, mm -hmm. so you can actually open a large majority of that. Yes still and she sleeps there and watches the stars and hears the birds and feels like i'm in paradise mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in this she jungle is. right she is so next slide here um is uh another gentleman you might have seen before 
And that's so that. That's him. That's this guy that's here. Him. And Desping Architect then has been uh, also employing the same strategy of what Ronald calls structural expressionism quite a bit, which we were pointing out in this previous show. And so he's a hero for us, and he's an inspiration for mm -hmm. us. And so all over the world, people are just really worshiping the Killingsworth legacy. And this project here is a, is a future proposal for <clears throat> our islands here. Uh, next slide. And what is this project? Well, this is going to be, I believe we're talking about, uh, this is, this is a, the shipping container one? Or no, is no, this Primitivo? That, that is Primitivo this 1. Is, this is Primitivo 1, which is the circular. Those are, those are yeah. sections of the circular yeah, yeah. cylindrical mm -hmm, unit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what we see in the plan on the uh, table. And this is the engineer who made all of these things possible. Yeah. And I, sitting with you. I um, call him the master of uh, mid-century marvels. Yeah. This is Dr. Alfred Yi right. that I had the chance to meet once before he passed away at a pretty old age. So he had a really fulfilled life. Yes. And there was just like um, magic to yeah. meet him. And uh, you could, and you were basically it gives you the it cements the foundation of what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's saying yes, it can be done, and this is how you do it. Yeah, but he was he was actually you know this is what made him so special. He was a Da Vinci guy. He said, well, the structure is don't worry about it. We figure this out. I want to talk about this project because it's a life and it lives. Uh -huh. He was pointing out to Queen Emma Gardens yeah. and this project here. Yeah. So he was very much a social engineer as much as a technical yeah. structural yeah, engineer, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So next slide here is pretty much him. This is the result of the master that he was able, only he was able to make these bones so skinny, so right. slender, right. so elegant. And again, if people say, well, you know, besides where the roof is, what are they good mm -hmm. for? Can't we value engineer them? Exactly. Can't we clip yeah. them off? Yeah. But right. just like my experience with that community grocery store, which is very much along the lines we've been talking before, is like if you're saving money elsewhere and making them uh, so repetitive and rigid and efficient and effective, then you have some money left over that then you can spend. And we can do on things Because like actually this. the cubic footage of the extra concrete is really not worth right. mentioning, right? Correct. So with so little more, you create so much yeah. as, as you, before the show, you were like, again, expressing your, your love, made a love oh, declaration absolutely. towards these, right? Oh yeah, the aesthetics of this entryway, the soaring high quality mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is, is something you'd never see again. Yeah, and let's go to uh, the next slide here. Because we're having, you know, uh, the tourist industry, because there's a hotel. We were talking, well, you know, maybe they could keep it, but then basically make it, uh, make it luxury suites for the hotel. Mm -hmm. And then there is our exotic escapism expert, Suzanne, who basically says, no, don't do that. Because this project was innovative because it was foreseeing a trend that we now have even more. Right that you don't want to create hospitality ghettos right. or resorts. Right. The key word is mixed use, yeah. right? And you mentioned another lady. Yeah, and Kimberly Pine, who I believe, she's either a representative or a senator in the state government, and she just recently introduced a bill saying people who are incoming to the Hawaiian Islands should be signing an agreement saying that they will respect this mm -hmm. environment and treat it as though they were residents here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same, same type of mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before we now actually have, we speak on behalf of the architect or Ronald, but let's do one more thing here, thank you, uh, which is the environmental check that we always do. While the hotel is strategically, as Ron told us, facing south towards the ocean, Makai and then Malka to the north, because at that time they weren't able to handle it right. differently, even if air, condition, air conditioning wasn't able to handle anything Correct. else, so they had to do that. But the apartments are turned around, which is usually a no-go. We tell the students, don't face west. But here, because of the dense pecking, mm -hmm. and then the landscaping, oh, it's yeah. basically self-shading, and it yes. works very well. And you pointed out the trade winds, too. And we've right? got strong trade winds in this particular location. In fact, in the hotel itself, sometimes it's a little too windy, mm -hmm. but there's always air movement, almost always, going through yeah. this and yeah. helping keep yeah. it comfortable. So we're now... Uh, uh, let Ronald talk through us, and we right. have our producer Eric basically um, walk us through the project one more time, actually from sort of, um, uh, you know, Makai to Mauka, and so we're going to 
switch right. and basically alternately basically um, Read say what, what is a wonderful, we thought we just have to share that with you guys. Yeah. So another angle is considering saving the apartments from destruction before 2027 is that it was very much a partner with the original Kahala Hilton Hotel. Some of that statement is rather obvious. Both themes were designed at roughly the same time by an extremely talented architect who was at the very height of his creative powers. And the architects love this man who wrote this uh, for the original Kahala Hotel is tied up with how avo avowed modernity was enriched with elements of classical planning, especially touches of axiality and symmetry. The warmth of the traditional was used as a pleasing contrast with the modern setting. Wood louver panels, art glass chandeliers and light fixtures, a beautifully curving stairway whose wooden handrail is a masterpiece of the carpentry arts and soft, pleasing paint colors over all the exposed concrete, both structure and walls. Add to this the respectful touches of tropical Hawaiiana. Black lava stone wall festooned with colorful orchids is wrapped around the curving stairway. Lush plantings everywhere and, as of just recently, this display of a museum piece example of ancient Hawaiian bird feather crowning headdress and cape in the very epicenter of the entry lobby pavilion. But as Ronald says, the apartments that we're talking about here are even more startlingly classical in plan layout. The buildings over their 5.5 acres are completely symmetrical. The major classical axis runs through the very center line of the outdoor reception lobby, through a jungle garden, there we go, mm -hmm. across a long midline of a classically oval swimming pool that we have seen, yes. out over the beach and far away into the ocean. Cross axis through all four apartment buildings shorten the corridor experience and brings welcome natural side lighting to the experience of traversing the long though relatively wide corridors. There is no more traditional experience so well incorporated into a modern building in all of Hawaii as the two enormous new Baroque murals that face each other over a soaring entry space that is hung with a bravura art chandelier. When the arrival of Kamehameha and the bird of Hawaii were first unveiled to the Oahu public, the local art world was truly incensed at what they considered a retrograde and black siding artistic endeavor completely out of place with its time. So that's to be argued. Yes, right? to be argued. The truly breathtaking and absolutely free gift that was lavished by Ed Killingsworth on both adjacent properties together is the soaring vertical proportions of applied columns and cantilevered beam ends. And we've been seeing that very clearly. They are simply perfectly proportioned in my mind, in the mind of the architect, one looks at these and one is invariably and helplessly pleased with the act of looking. Even more so, those exposed structural elements brought another lavishly and totally free gift to both the hotels and the apartments, simple flat facades. The enlivening, humanizing, and just plain mesmerizing play of constantly moving shadows throughout a sunny day and a full moon evening. Now comes a touchy part for me as an educator. Yeah. Why haven't architects more amply provided such free gifts as deeply human proportions and a play of light in their architecture? There is, simple, there is a simple answer. The skill for creating pleasing proportions isn't been developed in architectural education, oh, oh, mm -mm. or in architectural practice, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. When one talks of deeply satisfying human proportions in buildings, one is skating too close to the concept of beauty. Architects are uncomfortable with this concept, possibly because they can't recognize it as the driving need that is most certainly is within a fulfilling life. Ed said that beauty was the promise of happiness. Can they no longer make people genuinely happy with their architectural settings? The miracle of Albert Choi's landscaping is especially evident at the apartments. After all, these are, quote, four shoeboxes setting out to sea, unquote, as Ed <laughs> ironically described this major residential creation all faced each other closely across dimensions as small as 30 feet. How could any reasonable degree of privacy be achieved from unit to cross unit? The answer is both simple and extremely difficult at the same time. It simply required a lush tropical landscape design from Albert Choi, who I pointed out to you my parents knew mm. and who did landscape work for them, cool. who was both a master landscape designer and the most knowledgeable plantsman in the island. 
It brought the difficulty of the need for constant and expensive maintenance, meaning trimming, cleaning, replanting, feeding, watering, etc., to create a consistently private and beautiful, there's that uncomfortable concept again, <laughs> tropical paradise for the apartment's lucky denizens. Now for a discussion of a less obvious partnership, a symbiosis between the apartments and the hotel, especially in their early years of such close adjacency. The owners of the 196 apartment units had spacious residences. That is true. However, they used the hotel as their semi-private living room, source of lively entertainment, dining room and guest facilities for visiting family and friends. And that is what exotic escapism expert That's Suzanne right. says is That's today right. even more necessary right. in the right. future. Today and in the future. They were apartment residents who rarely ever cooked choosing to simply stroll to their gracious and delicious hotel dining experiences. Indeed, in the early partnership years, the hotel kitchens provided room service to the apartment. Once the hotel had become successfully busy with their own fully occupancy guests, this practice was gradually <laughs> curtailed or could be reactivated. Right? <laughs> Uh, to, the, to Ron's mind, the original hotel and the apartments are the unblemished left facial cheek and the right facial cheek of a single beautiful woman. He did like to talk about that. He does. Uh, please forgive the bold and histrionic romantic sentiments, but a successful intoxic intoxicating romanticism is what was created here in these closely related architectural achievements. As perhaps never before, modernism, traditionalism, classicism, and a warm touch of authentic Hawaiiana were superbly combined to create the unique and piercingly beautiful romanticism of tropical living that was shared by both short-term hotel guests and long-term apartment residents. This was done so well that it deserves to be maintained for many future generations. Perhaps it has never been done better anywhere in the world's tropic and subtropic tropic regions. It certainly deserves an unmitigated love directed toward preserving it not just a stale and impartial consideration of the merits of what surely exists today as a human community of the highest order. And let's also just point out that Ron is very experienced in building in many tropical environments, because he, he had done a great deal of that. He told us that. He gave me a list of 222 projects all over the world. So that is very that's, And that's, for him to say that with his experience Abs is, means absolutely. something. So thank you, Ron, for that. No one could have yes. put this more perfectly. Exactly. And we phase out here with um, quoting you, DeSoto, and of the architect of your youth. Because yeah. we were saying, well, you know, the, the landowner can say, well, who says that? Obviously, are we. But is there an example where that has basically, uh, you know, been yeah. able to, yeah. to work out? Correct. And so what is that and project? And the example is the IBM building, which is uh, also designed by Vladimir Osipov, mm -hmm. very important local architect. And the Howard Hughes Corporation was made to understand that that was a building worth keeping. Mm -hmm. And they fortunately did take the step to do it. That's their corporate headquarters now for their local operations. Mm -hmm. And it's been saved in the midst of an area of tremendous yeah. redevelopment. So we, as you said, yeah. we, we understand that we can't keep everything. Mm -hmm. But there are certain buildings that yeah, we must yeah, focus yeah. on and we must keep. And this building is a Zeitgeist Zibling oh, it because it is. was built in 62. Yeah. And the hotel is one and a half, two years later. That's right. So it's definitely, again, please come in at school. The message is clear yeah, as the please. name of the show. Yeah. Kahala's Killingsworth Condominiums Keeper. Yep, so they are. please, please, please. And with that, we're at the end of the show. Hopefully, we hope to see you again uh, soon for one of our next shows addressing the sh same issues. Yeah. And until then, please stay uh, tropi hearingly, <laughs> tree textually <laughs> tropical. Bye-bye. <laughs>